this is Roy. I work at Square on the cryptographic identity and secret management team. Today I'm going to be talking about our AWS ODC authentication infrastructure using Spiffy at Square. So we're going to be going over what is ODC and why we're using it with AWS, the architecture, our solutions, and the current status of ODC at Square. So let's start with the overview. Some background about AWS at Square. We're in the process of transitioning to the cloud with a focus on AWS. It's been a slow process. There's lots of apps still in the Square DC. These DC apps will often use services in AWS, such as S3 and SQS. Uh, apps in AWS live on separate accounts. So we have a uh, isolation there. And then we also have isolation in terms of the environment that the apps are on. So staging and production will be on different accounts. So what is OIDC? OIDC is an open, open standard and decentralized authorization protocol. It allows third parties to verify the identity of end users, uh, does so by sending data about users in JOTs, which are signed by an authorization server, which in our case would be Spire. So there's no need to use a separate identity and separate authentication for every third party you try to connect to. So we're going to be talking about a small subset of this OIDC spec, which is the discovery provider. The discovery provider exposes JSON web key sets or JOCs for JOT validation. So there's two endpoints that the provider has. It has the well-known OpenID configuration and the keys. The keys is pretty straightforward. It just serves the JOCs. The discovery document contains metadata about the provider, uh, including information about the issuer of the JOTs, the URI where the uh, keys are served from, and the algorithms used to sign the JOTs, as well as the response types. So this is an example of a JOT we would have at Square for OIDC authentication to AWS. Uh, in the subject, we have the spiffy ID of the app. In the audience, we have the intended AWS account uh, this is like the AWS account that is supposed to receive this JOT, and then we have the issue at that time. So we had three options when we were choosing what to put in the audience field. We could have had it be the intended app. So if my app was trying to talk to like test app or something, then the audience would have been test app. The di problem with that is that it doesn't differentiate between uh, environments. So it wouldn't differentiate between a staging and production version of test app or the dependency. And so we went with the AWS account. And you know, at Square, we separate uh, each app and their environments into separate accounts. So this works for us. Um, a third option would have been to isolate it further down into the role that we try to, we're trying to assume in that account. But there's a limited number of audiences that you can have. So we, found, we like chose the middle ground of just the AWS account. So this prevents this job from being um, taken or stolen and used to uh, impersonate the um, app or my app. So this limits the scope of where the job can be used. So a quick overview of how OIDC and AWS works. AWS IAM support, supports using uh, OIDC identity providers. So these are tied to provider URLs and then the roles can have a trust relationship with these providers. So it can it'll check that the provider is coming from the correct URL, it checks metadata in their JOT, and uh, we check for whether the subject has the spiffy ID that we expect. And also the audience is the correct one. The AWS, uh, S, so AWS STS allows us to use these JOTs to assume into a role. You know, the role through IAM checks all the information that we need. So this is kind of how uh, we were connecting to AWS from the DC prior to RDC. Uh, app owners would create an AWS user, attach a policy to that, and then in the AWS console, request the user's access keys, record those keys in an AWS credentials file, uh, used typically on their laptop, and then upload that credentials file to our secret store, uh, KeyWiz. And then uh, DC apps would be able to fetch those secrets out of KeyWiz and then use them to run as an AWS user. So this process you know, is pretty manual. Uh, there's a lot of steps involved. There's a lot of places it could go, it could go wrong. There's a lot of places where the keys could leak. Uh, and it's very unlikely that 
a app owner would go and refresh those user access keys. So we've had like keys that you know have been, been be, haven't been changed in like years. So um, the new method, the OADC method, involves a lot less work from app owners. So we've created the Terraform module that uh, automatically creates this role and sets up the proper um, configurations for the identity provider and attaches an AWS policy to it. Um, and all the app owner needs to do is, um, of course, implement that Terraform module, or use that Terraform module, and then add a configuration to their app. Uh, we call that the P2 manifest. So all they need to do is add a, a couple lines to their manifest. Uh, in this case, you can see here an example where uh, we specify the role that we're trying to assume into and then a name for that um, role. So in this case, extra role. And this is like basically the, if you were through credentials files before, it's like the profile name. Yeah, that's all that the app owner needs to do. The rest of it is automatically done by our OIDC architecture. So let's go over how that works. This is a broad overview of all the uh, moving parts. And then I'm going to break this down into smaller pieces. So we're going to start with the P2 hook. So P2 is like our container orchest orchestration um, software. So at startup, we uh, hook. We have a hook that reads the credentials file from their manifest or the configuration and generates a credentials file, an AWS credentials file from that. That's stored in the app's home directory. And then when a DC app needs to talk to AWS, they um, read that credentials file, and then inside the credentials file, we specify a credential process, which is one of the ways that you can uh, fetch credentials when trying to talk to AWS. Um, and the credential process is actually a open source tool we've written called Spiffy AWS Assume Role. That tool requests a jot from your Spire agent, which is signed by the Spire server, and then sent off to AWS, where it is verified against uh, the cached jocks that we have um, in S3 uh, with a CloudFront domain in front of it. So how do we get those jocks into S3? We have a cron that syncs the results of um, the Spiffy OIDC discovery provider, which is provided by the Spire implementation, to S3. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But yeah, that's basically how the architecture works. The Spiffy OIDC uh, provider fetches the information from the Spire agent and we sync that to S3. So the Spire OIDC discovery provider, again, it's provided by Spire. I've included a link for you to check out. Uh, it serves the jocks and OIDC discovery uh, document. In our case, we serve the endpoints through an envoy socket. Now I'm going to talk about the custom tools that we've made to enable our setup. So uh, I'm going to go more detail about the P2 hook and how that works. So again, this is a sample configuration that would be in their P2 manifest. So we have the name of, of the role, the Spiffy OIDC test, and then the role itself, I'm trying to assume. So, and then below we have what the line would be, what the block would be in their credentials file. So the profile name would be Spiffy OIDC test, and then the credential process calls out to Spiffy AWS assume role with a few options. Um, See here that you know we're assuming to this role, the Spiffy OIDC test role with the Spiffy ID of the app, Spiffy OIDC test, and we specify the audience, and then the socket for the Spire agent. We also have options for specifying the region of STS and the endpoint of STS that you're trying to use. Uh, this is in case you're using a PPC. Cool. So we also wrote a cron job to sync the discovery provider to S3 buckets and so we, we did this because we had issues with exposing our staging endpoints to the public and AWS needs to be able to access those endpoints in staging. Uh, so instead of trying to expose our staging environment, we just uploaded everything to S3 and then used uh, CloudFront domain. And we also used custom square domains, which is possible using ACM certificates. Um, and we did this so we had more control over the, the domains. This also provides us with like caching of the ORDC endpoints and more availability since CloudFront um, can serve it from more edge servers. So we pull the jocks every 10 seconds just in case they are refreshed by Spire. Uh, we want to keep them up to date 
and then the discovery document doesn't really change, so we just change it, we just pull it every 24 hours. Cool, and then our open source tool, Spiffy AWS Assume Role. I'm included a link for you to check out. Uh, the tool uses Spiffy Jots to assume into AWS roles. So, as you saw before, it's used with a credential process option, uh, and it calls STS Assume Role with web identity with Jots that we retrieve from your local Spire agent. So it supports retries, it supports logging, we have metrics, there's uh, support for VPC endpoints, and you can even configure the SDS session duration, which I didn't show before. So that defaults to one hour and it's customizable with this tool. So cool. Um, so in conclusion, the current status of Spiffy RDC. So we rolled out to general availability. We just needed to make some changes to shared libraries to use the credentials files in uh, app's home directories instead of fetching it from KeyWiz, our secret store. Uh, we're currently migrating apps to IDC, but that's, pretty been, that's been a pretty hands-off process. Teams have really been able to do it on their own. We haven't really encountered any major issues. There's minor blips with, you know, we have issues with um, connecting to CloudFront and CloudFront fetching from S3, which we're uh, working through, but it hasn't really been a blocker. Cool. And if you want to learn more about the uh, security infrastructure at Square uh, in AWS, you can check out our developer blog, um, the corner blog, which I'll include a link to. There's a more in-depth article about AWS OIDC authentication, some articles about how we manage secrets in Lambda, and how we provide identities in Lambda. Thank you.